So your assignment um, has three parts to it. Um, you're essentially creating a tower, right? Uh, a, a parametric tower. Um, and so you have to consider your uh, floor to ceiling height. Um, it's going to be a slider, obviously. And for structure, you, you're asked to... Um, yeah, so you can use a simple structural core, which is uh, essentially a, a single large column. Um, but you are encouraged to, you know, uh, add more complexity to the structure, maybe like an outside um, support structure or maybe like more smaller columns. So you create a script that gives you, you know, like the ability to create like variations. So you, you're actually, um, I guess, submitting three different towers uh, made from the same script. Um, yeah, so three towers, one script, and you're just, so you're only allowed, I don't know what this rule is. Uh, I didn't, I'm not familiar with this rule, but you, you're only allowed to shift two input parameters per tower. Um, and basically by changing those two up to two, then you can just, I guess, get new towers. Um, yeah. And then the second part is your drawings and you'll have um, isometric views of your drawings, um, one per tower. Uh, so one isometric view looking north per tower, one view looking northeast per tower, and um, yeah, elevation and uh, plan. Then finally, in, in the third part, you will have to sort of um, draw like a um, method diagram describing how you arrived at your form um, from a very basic point. Uh, for most of you, it'll be um, like a rectangle you start with. Some of you, maybe it's a cylinder. and Basically, you're, you're going to show how that cylinder turns into the very interesting tower that you will create. And that's, that's it. Really simple, um, looks like. Um, yeah, so let's go jump into Grasshopper. I'll show, I'll go over the script really quickly, and then I'll like do the script with, with all of you so you have it on your computer. Um, so my tower... It's just this very basic tower. Um, but the important part is this first part, and um, I think all of you might want to have this. We're starting with just a point in Grasshopper. So that's construct point, and it creates our, our, our basically our um, where, where the tower will start. And then we have two sliders here, floor height and number of floors. We multiply that together to basically get the height of our building, right? And then I'll just move that point and construct a line. Um, so that's the green line you're seeing here. That will be that will basically define our tower um, in this case. Um, so you can change these parameters around, and it'll change the shape of your of your tower. Um, it's really slow right now because of the script running. But um, let's say the floor height is three meters, and you have fifty floors. So you, can, you have to have a minimum of 30 floors in this assignment. So once you have your tau, um, line, you're moving on to this next part, which is creating your form. Um, this part here is going to be unique to you. So however you want to decide um, to create your, I guess, 3D form is up to you. Um, in this example, uh, what I've done is I've taken that line that is the tower, essentially, divided it up into um, four parts. And then I created some circles. Then I evaluated uh, basically along these circles just randomly. So I'm using random here. And then once I have these points, what I can do then is create more circles um, on these points. And then I have a another random parameter, which will control the um, diameter of each of these circles. Oh, and if I sort of change this around, you can maybe see a bit easier that all I'm giving it is a range. Um, and it through that range, it just creates um, these randomly sized circles. And then what I do is I just waft these circles and it creates this interesting form. Um, very, very simple. And that is essentially um, part one um, halfway done part one. So part one is just, you know, creating your tower. You're almost done. 
the next step, there's two steps here. Um, the first thing I would do is just, you know, pipe the, uh, the line we created earlier. So remember this line is, you know, just the point that was moved and it's the size of your tower. If you just add a pipe to it, it creates your central column. And this part here is going to be um, basically taking this form and slicing it up into floor plates. So to do this, we need um, this component here. It's called rep plane. So if you just type in rep plane, it's this one. What it takes in is a rep, which is going to be your form. And the other thing it needs is a series of planes. Um, and these planes were created um, from basically taking this line and dividing it up um, 50 times. So when you, when you divide it up 50 times, you get um, a floor plate. Uh, well, each one of these points will be a floor, right? And then I created planes at each one of these points. And then I just sliced the loft. And that gives you these curves on the outside. Oops. And you can use um, boundary surfaces, which is here. Oops, maybe I can show you this way. So boundary surfaces is located under surfaces. And it just takes a curve, a closed curve, and it just creates a, um, a solid um, face. So once you've done that, you're essentially done the assignment. So if I select all three of these things together, I have the tower, I have the floor plates, and the single solid core. You can go a little bit um, more advanced into the structure. So for example, maybe like in this area, I want there to be more columns, like smaller ones. Um, I can show you how to do that really quickly later, but um, it's up to you. It's very, very simple. Any questions so far? Um, so that's because that's basically your assignment. And if I just show you some variations of, of this form, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this slider here. And what this would do is sort of make my tower straight or like more wacky. It's, it's up to you, really. Yeah, that's, that's all I had for the um, lesson part of it. Mainly just wanted to answer questions and maybe look at your scripts in the beginning. But to get started, um, you just need this, which is going to create your floor plane, uh, your building size, and you can control the uh, height and number of floors. And of course, slicing it using um, this component, which is located here. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe I'll go like step by step, just do this script all over. Um, do you guys want to follow through with that? Or was this clear? I mean, you can watch the video and do do it then as well. But I don't mind um, staying a bit and just uh, covering all of this again. I guess we can maybe we can go over since there is no sure. questions. Yeah, yeah. And sure. Maybe we, can, Sounds... maybe we can try uh, different forms. Yeah, you know what? Let's do another way of creating. Or actually, I wanted to show, I guess, the structure and how to create, like, I guess, a bit more complicated structure. So the way I do it is, um, so once I have my floor plates, um, I can offset them. So offset curve. And let's say it's going to be one meter or two meters away from the edge. That should be enough. Um, so now I have this other curve on the inside, and I can divide that curve up further. And let's say I want there to be five pillars. Um, 
So I have another slider. I'll turn it up to five. So there's going to be five uh, points at every um, inner circle here. And I can just then um, move these points down exactly the size of the um, of the each floor. So this is the floor height. I'll bring this slider all the way over, connect it up to the, oh, I have to connect it up to a unit C first. And then from that unit C, go into motion. And so now I have a series, so I have two points, right? Um, I can connect that up to a line. So this first point goes in first, and then our second point, and now if I select everything together, um, not this one, I will have um, a bit more complicated or complex structure that sort of goes around through the building. Um, and of course I can uh, add a pipe to it to make it thicker. And maybe I'll use a new slider for the radius, maybe each pillar is um, it's like 30, it's like one meter, um, one meter in radius, or maybe half a meter in radius. So yeah, with that, you have your support structure. Um, if you want it to be a bit organized, you can sort of organize them in, in, in reps. So I can bring in my large pipe for the center core. So that's going to be essentially my structure. Then I have my floor plates, which are surfaces, but also reps. So that will be my floor plates. And finally, the shell, which is another rep, will be this loft. And uh, essentially, these three components will make your tower, right? And right now, this pillar is going like from the outside you're building. Um, if that's the look you want, that's fine, as long as there's some sort of connection. But I don't want that, so I'm going to change this. Um, maybe I'll disable this. Oh, this is slow. Uh, yeah, I need to disable this. Yeah, that's, that's essentially, essentially how you add more structure to your um, tower. And yeah, so when I'm happy with the form, I can re-enable this um, really heavy component, which deals with the slicing. And it will give back the floor plates as well as the smaller support structures. And it looks like the support structures are going um, through the roof. So maybe what I wanted to do is um, reverse the direction. So instead of going up, I want it to go down. Um, what is it? Reverse vector. What is this command? Flip curve. You know what? I'm just going to add a negative here. So the factor was something else. I'm just going to negate that. And then my tower, uh, my support structures go down and into the ground this time. Yeah, so that's one way you can make your tower. Um, I'm not saying it has to be this simple with the form. Um, this is where you can really go crazy. Um, I guess I'll show another way to do this part. Why not? We have time. So once you have this part done, which is just this, this line, which will be um, an outline for your tower, um, I can take that line and let's say divide it up again. So copy this over and I'll add a new slider. So let's say I have this many points. Uh, what I can do then is um, move these um, points in a or actually, what other cool tower could I make? Okay, 
cool. We can do something like this. Um, yeah, cool. So to do something like that, um, what I would need first is um, a circle on the bottom. So let's create, um, let's actually just get this, uh, the endpoints. So the endpoints of this line, or I could have easily gotten this point here. I just wanted a point in the center. From there on, I'll create a circle that will be of radius, say 20, 20 meters. And I'll divide this circle um, four times. So this is the number of um, these smaller circles I'll have. So if you look at this building, it looks like there's one, two, three, and maybe four on the other side. So we'll create four circles and copy this circle again. And um, I guess I can have a different radius for these circles. Um, like that. So essentially I have um, four circles um, around the center point. So that's just this part. And then what I can do is move, um, basically move each of these points up uh, in a series. So I'd use series uh, here. Um, and I'd move it up how many times? Well, how many floors do I have? So I have 70 floors here. I can just connect this up to my count. The step size is going to be um, how high do I want to move these circles up each time? And that's your um, building floor height. So I have this slider here. I can bring that over. And the start can, it can be zero. That's fine. Rotate and move. Okay. Geometry. Um, so this is the move. Um, That's the step, that's the count and our angle. And we're gonna move each of these up. But first, wrap this, wrap this. This is why I should always prepare lessons before. Oh, that's interesting. What's going on here? Okay. You know what? I give up. Could yeah. Be the way that you uh, copied the the original circle. I don't know if did, did you copy it or yeah, it, it is probably something here. Um. So I have four circles here, and they're all correctly. Then I like. Is there a clockwise or like counterclockwise order or something? Um. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but. 
Why that? If I figured this out, I'll. Okay, so it, okay, I just somehow figured it out. Okay, let's see what was it, what the problem was. First of all, let's. Okay, so the angle, since there's a lot of floors, the angle needs to be very small. You know, maybe that's what it was. I just didn't realize that we have so many floors that oh, it's, yeah. it's going like it's spinning around like multiple times. So I'm going to turn this into, let's say, 30 floors just to test. So we have a series here for um, the moving so there's like seven, uh, 30 floors and it's just moving up each time and then we have another series here which is the angle so the angle goes into the angle we graph the input from here oh, if it makes sense and then rotate that put it into geometry and this is our motion get rid of these and the loft okay so why did that not need to be okay so yeah, so it is working. It's just like that's what it was. That's what it looked like before. That's because the angle was too high. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe whoever uploads um, the video will edit all of that time out. But. Mm -hmm. What we have here is the uh, the circles that we had before, and then we have uh, we were first rotating the angle, and then we're moving this around. So the angle this needed to be grafted um, because if this didn't get grafted, um, you have a lot of craziness happening. So graft that the angle, and then we just move that, and then we're moving it. Uh, so we're rotating it here, and then we're just moving it up here and then finally just loft everything together and hopefully the data tree like everything will line up um, also just be careful of the uh, this the change in angle each time i'm rotating this 0.3 degrees each time um, we're moving and that's even like too much sometimes okay um or maybe it's too little what happens if I put this up to 90? Yeah, it's just weirdness. Um, so another thing is, since this per, this like these circles here um, were parametric, we can control how many there were. So if I change the slider to, let's say, six, I can have uh, more than just those four circles. Uh, it's hard to see because it's sort of going through itself. Um, maybe if I change this. So I have six circles here and they do rotate. There. Yeah, so maybe that's your tower. Um, yeah, essentially, like, you decide how you want to make the form. And if I wanted to, I can pass these curves um, into the rep and that would create the slices I need to make my floor plates. And um, that's pretty much it. Let's do something here. And I'll just put this into my um, part three slicing floors, and its intersection failed. Wow, a lot of errors today.
Yeah, maybe don't complicate your um, geometry with multiple. I don't know why this isn't working. Um, so it does work, but it's just some of the curves are failing. Um, might be because, oh, I see why. So somehow um, there's this plane here that's above the shape. So if I just get rid of that plane, so I'm gonna take these planes and get rid of the last one. That will hopefully remove that extra plane that was above. Is there one below it? No. So then I can take these into the plane. And that's happier. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's how you slice things. Just uh, make sure that your, what you're slicing is um, accurate, uh, like placed properly. So there shouldn't be any planes above your geometry. And that gives you these shapes. If I were to bake these, yeah, so each one of these uh, will be a floor. And you can add thickness to it as well if you want to. Um, and essentially, that's a tower. Um, any any questions? Anybody got started yet? Maybe I can take uh, a look. Did you, did you show how to add the thickness? Or... Oh yeah, sure, I can do that. So once if, you have your... It's complicated here, maybe on the simple one. We'll... Uh, yeah, no, it should be the same. I'm just gonna delete that. Um, I believe it's extrude. A long extrude. So I'm just going to need a unit Z because I'm extruding up and down. I'll take these surfaces um, and a factor. So how high do you want the floors to be? Um, let's say one meter maximum, I'll go with 30 centimeters. And that will give you, like, if I bake this out, you'll have solid um, poly surfaces. So it's just um, here and a unit Z, just the direction. Um, one thing you might be might need to be wary of is um, so the solid structure, the extrusion might sort of um, like l protrude out of the um, hard to see here but it's sort of since it's just going up and your surface outer, outer surface is curved um you're, you're going to have this issue where the extrusion is sort of leaving the surface it's not an easy fix you could try trimming it after but I don't, i'm not even going to try it in grasshopper it's just too too much if your surf if your outer surface isn't, isn't too curved um you won't really notice in this case but it is something to be careful of Any any questions? Um, just for exporting it, we have to make like drawings. So I was wondering, what's the best way to like bring shadows into Illustrator? Like, should we? Uh, okay. Yeah, mode? I can. I can show you that. So you'd have to first bake everything, um, and maybe put them into their own layers. But I'll just so say you have this. Um, shape bakes right if you go into um do you have v-ray yeah but i've never used it <laughs> okay well v-ray is sort of maybe i can do a uh, tutorial on this later but um 
there is also a Rhino Render, which gives you shadows, but I have never used a Rhino Render. Okay, let's try. Um, okay, let's try a straight up render right now. That's really not that good. Um, but there are render settings and I believe, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to do it in Rhino. I just don't know how, um, but once we have V-Ray, let's try V-Ray. Maybe I need to restart right now. Okay. Uh, let me try this. Save. Awesome. So we're going to have a V-Ray, that's not it, um, tutorial in the, in the, over the reading week. So that's probably good, but let's see if we can be installed. My, why is V-Ray not appearing? Uh, is your, does your, is your VPN on? I yeah, I just I just turned the VPN on. It's connected. Um, maybe I didn't install it correctly. Hmm. License settings are good. Oh, you know what it is. Oh. I didn't enable it. I'll try this again. It takes a while to um, launch Rhino with V-Ray, so forgot I disabled it. Okay, so now I should have a V-Ray as my current, yeah. Cool. So there are a few settings um, you need to worry about. First of all, you need to turn on sun to get any sort of sun effect. Um, and um, yeah, I can start up a interactive render right now, just to see what it looks like. Nothing and sun is too bright. So you could use V-Ray like this. So first of all, enable the sun and mess with the power. So if it's too high, it might sort of wash out the image. Um, also, if you type in sun in Rhino, you'll get the sun control panel and you can just sort of manually um, set the time or you can choose uh, what time of date is. And that would probably give you some shadows and just need to lower the sun power again. You can also change your exposure here. So if you go into settings um, under camera, there is exposure and I think if you, yeah, um, that might be too dark, but so say something like this.
just going to hide this surface. Yeah, so you need to, um, first of all, enable the sun and change its power to something really low, and then enable um, the ground plane to have shadows on the bottom. But maybe you don't want this. Maybe you just want it to be sort of um, on a white space and you want a transparent background. So you, you can turn that off as well. Um, and then if you go into your settings here, um, mess around with the exposure just to see how bright or, or dark you want it. Um, say 10 is pretty good. And what you also need to do is material override um, because by default, Rhino is uh, materials in Rhino will be white. And that will not really show up very well in, in, in V-Ray. You can also change the material here. So um, maybe if I do concrete, so I can just apply it to all of my floor plates uh, or everything. So I've selected everything and I just do apply to selection. And then you don't need to do material override um, and you'll still get some sort of detail. Yeah, and then uh, it just look through these settings here. Um, if you turn off interactivity, it'll do an actual render and you just need to go to render output and set your um, resolution to custom. If you match viewport, it will match what you're seeing here. So if it's like, like if, you, if this is how you like want the, um, this is how large you want the render, you can keep it like that. And then just close everything, click here to show the asset editor, um, should be under V-Ray all. And then if you go into settings, match viewport, click on this button and it will sort of match the viewport to your, um, match the render to your viewport. You can always crop it later, but um, yeah, once you're done that, you don't need to click save frame here. Um, just click render and it'll, it might take a while, but once it's done rendering, um, it'll let you know what I'm here. You know what, I'm just gonna change the settings. So we're gonna do RTX and not progressive. Oh, okay, so this is still loading. And can I stop it? No, it cannot. Yeah, so just um, render it out. And um, I think I have a video of how to get the renders to line up to your drawings on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, so check that out, it should be good. Render is taking a while. Might be faster if I just This rhino does not want to close. Okay, let's try this again. So first steps would be to enable sun and enable the ground plane. Then um, I guess you can keep the sun power as is if you change the exposure. But what you should, all, you should do is um, material override and set it to some sort of um, grayer color than not just white. And um, yeah, we'll turn on interactivity just as a test. And um, we'll go down to camera 
exposure, maybe 12. I will just do a render, see how that looks. So 12 is low. Oh, I should have gone to maybe 14. Okay, so um, if you like the exposure, maybe 12 was, you know. Um, you might notice a sort of yellowish tinge. Um, you can you can change that later, um, but it's just to do with the sun um, color. It's um, by default just a little bit yellow. Um, but uh, also, so once you have like a render that looks sort of decent, um, if you want to change again the sun parameters, you mess with the sh shadows. Just type in sun. Um, and it will open somewhere. You can dock it here if you want to, and then just um, mess with the timing and the season. Um, yeah, so let's say we're happy with that. You can just go over, let's actually do a proper render. So we'll close the frame buffer. We'll open up V-Ray again. Turn that off, turn that off. Um, CPU is fine. Go to render output. We'll leave the resolution as is um, and just click render. So that's a really low quality render, but once it's done, you can go to uh, file and then save current channel. And that will be all you need to do. Yeah, but if you don't want the white background, um, you can turn off the the ground plane, render it again, um, and then just save it again. This time, so there's uh, going to be a background uh, in this. It's a basic. It's a very quick um, intro to V-Ray. Um, there's also other things you can do like channels, but maybe that'll be covered in the more well-prepared tutorial over the reading week. But um, the main settings you need to worry about is just quality, crank it to like high, um, and then camera, you might wanna mess with the exposure settings. You can also change the exposure later. So let's say this was, um, so this is set to what it was before, I believe it was 10. Um, if you do a render and it's too washed out, then in the frame buffer here, um, forget where it is, but um, it's something here. VFD? No. It's one of these options. have not used this so far. There it is, exposure. So you can, um, yeah, so highlight burn is already maxed. So you can turn that down, uh, mess with the exposure after the fact, and it should bring back some more details. Um, but yeah, definitely do change the exposure here first. I think in here, I sort of assume that you already know how to render from V-Ray, so maybe I didn't go through the details, or maybe I did, I don't know, but if you follow this tutorial, it will be much easier than trying to follow what I just showed you on stream. But um, yeah, in the end, it'll be very easy to line up your renders because you're just um, scaling to the bounds of the image um, and in the end you'll have yeah perfect lines cool um yeah that's it for the for today